where I want to talk about um, pump seizure again. Um, the um, the thing about this is uh, the tolerance is so tight in here. I remembered seeing somewhere a warning about not washing your engine while it's running. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And I wasn't even thinking about the fuel injection pump, but I was just thinking about, like, are they worried about water getting in the motor while you're running it? Because, I mean, uh, lots of people have washed their engines on their automobiles while they're running. Um, so, anyways, I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing to do either, but they do it. But it's critical with these engines. So what happens is, if you uh, have an engine that's hot and been running, and the injection pump is hot, and you come along and you wash it down and you spray it with, you know, cold water, which if, you, if you're running your water out of your tap, it's going to come out at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That 50 degree Fahrenheit water hits the hot pump. And what happens is this outer part right here shrinks rapidly while this inner part is spinning and is still hot enough and you end up with a clearance problem and it'll seize this thing mighty quick and destroy it so uh, and then typically that shaft will snap if you're lucky but anyways then you're looking at a head replacement and uh, this this head assembly would have to be replaced and then a new shaft and of course you get your pump all torn down so you must reseal it while you're doing it but the uh, point is that uh, they did a study uh, on that also and they actually found that even um, fuel entering the pump that is significantly cooler or hotter than the pump's temperature can cause a pump seizure and they actually <laughs> figured out how much uh, the temperature difference had to be and I think it was about 70 degrees Fahrenheit so what they basically were saying was that you know if you had a pump that was running hot and say you were almost um, out of fuel and you suddenly topped off the tank with fuel that was 70 or more degrees cooler it could actually cause a pump seizure by the same token, if you had a pump that was very cold, say you had an engine that you had just started uh, running and it was in a very, very low temperature situation, and then all of a sudden you put in fuel that was significantly warmer, not sure how that would happen, but let's imagine that some way that happened. That, uh, let's say the, uh, the tanker truck that was refueling just came out of a warm building and it was in the Arctic and they just started the engine. Uh, it seems kind of crazy. Just trying to think outside the box. But that, that also could pump, uh, cause a pump seizure. And I thought about it and I said, well, you know, it was the military doing this study and they're dealing with uh, over there in Iraq and Afghanistan. And quite frankly, uh, they're probably looking at some big temperature swings over there. You know, uh, but anyways, just thought I'd mention uh, the moral of the story, kitties, is do not wash your dirt and junk off of your tractor engine after you've just come back to the garage from the field with a very hot engine and a cold garden hose, because it could be very bad. Okay, now let's look at this head assembly. Now it appears to me that the way this must come apart is that this screw has to be removed. That's what I think anyways. Could be wrong. Anyways, um, that screw is your fuel adjustment. Your max fuel adjustment, I believe is what they call it. But anyways, uh, the point is that that's not just a screw I can just unscrew and go, oh well, heck with it. Um, Turning that screw a small amount actually changes the dimension on this. Now, I don't remember exactly where the dimension is, but I do remember reading that it can be checked with a simple 2-inch micrometer. And it 
it looks to me as if by design you can see a space in there. So I think what we've got here is this is a spring steel piece and that as we tighten that screw that's going to push down on this and cause these two sides here to spread out this way. So if I were a betting man I'd say your dimension that you measure is from here to here. This outside dimension right here. Either that or it's the dimension from here to here. So I think I better take and record both of those dimensions before I take this screw out. So where I'm taking this measurement is I'm taking this measurement right at this edge about halfway down on this spring and I'm keeping the uh, keeping that flat just on the edge of that. So you see how that's kind of tilted right there? That wouldn't be good. I want to, of course, this is easy to do with my hand free. Let's see if a pro would be able to do this with one hand like this. Something like this. There we go. Okay, so what I'm getting there is 794 thousandths. Um, of course, this is a uh, one inch micrometer, so in reality, what I'm getting is 1.794. Okay, I don't think this is the correct way to measure it, but I measured it just for the heck of it. I'm getting uh, 529,000, so or 1.529. So now just for fun, let's turn this screw a quarter turn and see how much that dimension changes. Now this is uh, just a regular Allen head screw. My understanding is on the John Deere tractors, Apparently, the uh, type of head on this screw is different, and it requires a special wrench, which they call a Bristol wrench. Uh, I think it's B-R-I-S-T-O-L, and it can be hard to get a hold of, and if so, if you don't have one, what a lot of people will do is they'll take a regular uh, Allen wrench, and they'll grind it to modify it to fit, because I guess you can do that. So, Anyways, um, so I'm going to turn this. That's facing almost all the way up, so I'm going to turn this. I'm going to go in first, just for the heck of it, which is, should spread this out, so I should get a larger dimension. Let's see what happens if I go quarter turn in. Oh, use both hands. All right, so that's about a quarter of a turn. Let's see what happened to that dimension now. Well, that's quite a difference. Uh, that went uh, to 1.801. So 801 thousandths over an inch. So that quarter of a turn made a seven thousandths of an inch increase in diameter from here to here. This went from 529 to 524. Well, I wish I hadn't removed that screw because now not only did I destroy whatever that setting was, hopefully I'll be able to get it back by using my micrometer, but uh, that didn't get this out. There's two half circles in there that I think are actually the retainers. Somehow those have to be spread apart to get this out. Oh yeah, I forgot one other item I want to check for wear, and that's the, uh, the actual metering valve. So, let me take a look at this really close. So, I don't know, it looks pretty good, except for there's a uh, one spot right there. That looks like it's got a wear spot right there. But the rest of it looks really good, even under magnification. So, I don't know, unless that's, unless this is an inexpensive part. I won't replace it. I was able to confirm that this is the updated um, governor weight assembly, the solid one. So the original one would have just this part with this plastic ring on the back here, and that plastic ring is what's uh, known to break down into little pieces on these and cause trouble. 
So somebody had this pump apart and updated it with this. And this is in good shape. And that's good news for me because uh, this, right now on eBay, somebody's got these for sale, 80 bucks for this unit. Um, I found a cheaper source than that, but uh, still I think my cost be about $60, 50 or $60. So that's money I don't have to spend on that because I've already got this uh, in there.